Good evening, I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to The Buck Stops Here because it really does stop here with you and me and our community. Um, I, I'm gonna have to talk to the family, but it's been weeks ago, a young man named Michael Bryson disappeared. Uh, he was at a party out near Cottage Grove Lake, I think if I'm remembering correctly, but they'll correct me if I'm not. Um, and he uh, disappeared. And no one seems to know what happened to Michael Bryson, but there was a ton of people out there, uh, some kind of sketchy at a party. And the Brysons uh, are convinced that somebody knows something. Um, police have investigated. They've hired a private investigator to come on. Tonight we have the private investigator. We have Tina. We have Parrish. That's mom and dad. And then we have Donovan, a young man who's brave enough to come forward. He was at the party. And we're going to talk about this. And the whole purpose of this, you guys, right away, as soon as you see this on your page, share it on your page so other people can see it right now. Because somebody out there knows what happened to Michael. Somebody knows. There's more than one somebody that knows what happened. And and we, we want to jog memories or provide some guilt <laughs> or whatever it takes for somebody to step forward. And here's our studio group. And you guys can hear me and everything's fine? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have Mark is the private investigator, the guy with the beard like mine. And Tina, Parrish, Mom and Dad, Donovan on the phone. Okay. So I'm going to ask questions as little as possible because I can hear there's a little feedback on there. Um, Tina, Parrish, get people up to date with what's going on. Um, what's going on is we are approaching um, almost two months with no solid leads um, to what happened with Michael. Um, we have we've spent 19 days up at the camp um, that we made a base camp with and searched every day, um, came home on the 20th day and started doing our searching from home, whether it be um, cyber searching, if you will, on the computer, talking to people, chasing down leads, um, going back up and searching as time allowed. Uh, since then, uh, we've had some fire issues up here. So the forest is now closed, so we can't go up and search. So now most of our searching has been done via, like I said, either computer or phones. So, Donovan, you were at the party. Tell me what was going on. Um, I got up there on Monday uh, before Michael went missing, and it was a birthday party for one of our mutual friends. Uh, had probably 40-plus people out there. Um, yeah, we had music, DJ, a uh, couple buses out there. It was like a small renegade. And there was lots of drugs. I mean, supposedly, yeah, there was intoxicants out there like most parties have. When did you see Michael last? Um, actually, the morning he went missing, I saw him last. Uh, just drinking a beer with him by the fire, uh, probably... I think I passed out around, let's see, like two or three. Last time I saw him was probably around midnight or so. So what kind of people were at this party? I mean, you said it wasn't just your friends. There were other people that showed up. Uh, yeah, it was more of a collective of friend groups from around the area, mutual friends. Uh, some from Portland, some from Southern Oregon, some from here in Eugene. So how would you describe them? You were telling me early, um, some kind of sketchy people there. Uh, yeah, the locals, there was, uh, I guess there's a lot of transient individuals, homeless people that uh, just move camp to camp and uh, stay out there. There's a uh, mining out there. So there's some sketchy folks out there. 
when you when, you, when Michael disappeared, but were people talking about it, or was stuff going on? Like, hey, has anybody seen Mike? I mean, was that kind of what, what was that conversation like? Yeah, I was actually asleep uh, when he went missing, but I woke up probably around eight or nine in the morning to people yelling his name, looking for him. So uh, before everybody was woken up that was there at the camp, there was at least a few hours of time that had passed before the majority of us were looking for him. So real quick, before we continue, I just want to, you guys, I want to thank our sponsor, Buck Sanitary Service, um, Scott and Lisa Weld. They are so community minded. All I have to do is send them a text and say, here's what I want to do. Michael Bryson's family wants to put this out there and I just get a thumbs up every time. So they pay to sponsor this show because they care about this community and we want to make sure that, I mean, obviously when you're going to go to a restroom, if you have to go and you look up and it's not a box, you're going to use it. We understand that. But if you're having a party or some kind of facility, you do stuff for the people that I can, I can do this because of people like them. And I just want to make that point because that's what we're here. Um, that's why we're here is because of them. Mark, let's talk to you a second. You're a private investigator. Tell me what is just blowing your mind about this whole story. Um, I, I've been a private investigator for going on 30 years now. And I, I investigate a wide variety of cases. I don't really specialize in any specific area, kind of a jack of all trades. And um, what most of the time when I put as many hours in, and talk to as many people as I've talked to, I, I kind of build a, a picture of, of what went down and what, what, what the possibilities are. And in this particular case, I am totally confounded about what happened to, to, to Michael Bryson. What, what do you, what do we know? Um, and I've talked with, I've talked with the, with a large number of people that were at the party, either on the phone or face to face. And there seems to be a fairly consistent story that there are only a couple people that saw him when, right before he left the, he left the camp and has never been seen again. Um, those people, um, you know, claim that he, that he got off this bus and walked away and have no idea what happened to him after that time. Um, I've talked with another individual who is actually a, um, he's a homeless person that lives on the mountain most of the time, but he also lives down, down the road a bit too in a, in a, in a house. And he claims that he saw somebody walking up the road about 4.30 in the morning um, when he was out collecting aluminum cans, 4.30 in the morning um, up, in the, up in the mountains. But in, in any event, um, so literally those are the last people to have seen Michael and there, there has not been a clue since, not a shoe, not a hat. No one, no one has come forward and say, hey, I saw him, you know, walking down the road. I saw him get in a car. Nothing at all. So you know, I mean, anybody can answer this, but do, do you think that, that people know, somebody knows, right? Absolutely. How do you know that? How do you, how can you, you say, absolutely, I want to know. How do you know somebody knows? Well, I guess that's that's strong. That's that is strong because you know you hear circumstances, especially on how rugged that country is. And I don't know if you're familiar with the area around where Michael went missing, uh, but it's extremely rugged. Lots of undergrowth, lots of canopy. You, can, you know, air. You know, they've used drones. They've um, there's literally so many places where a body could be. And, you know, he could have obviously, you know, 430 in the morning wandered up the hill, but it's extremely steep and extremely rugged. And it just seems extremely unlikely that he, you know, that he that he, he went four wheel driving himself, you know, up a hill in Crocs, in Crocs where it s seems way more likely that he either followed the road up or followed the road down the path of least resistance. And there were lots of people up there at the time at different campgrounds. Um, it just it, it just seems so unlikely that someone doesn't know what happened to Michael. Rhonda, you, um, I see you on here. Would you take this and make sure that it's shared right now on the Let's Find Michael Bryson page? Because I see you have that on your thing. So if you would do that, I would certainly appreciate it. Tina, talk to me. What do you, what do you, what do you think? Of? 
I'm devastated. Um, I don't know how to do this. You don't know how to do what? I, I just don't know how to get through this. You know, um, there's no answers. Um, it's so frustrating. I feel like Michael's case has not gotten the media coverage that it should have. Um, we're finding out that if you're a child missing or if you're an elderly person missing, um, then they get a lot of coverage. But if you're just an adult missing, it's up to family and friends to, to, to do the search, to, to, to try and figure out what happened, to try and play detective, to try and uh, field calls and text messages. And we have people calling us every day saying, um, I know where your son is. Let's talk about the reward. What? Or we have psychics calling us, telling us your son is dismembered. Start looking in the landfills. Oh. Um, our phone numbers are out there and they're everywhere. And so trying to deal with all of that and trying to grieve your son and not knowing what happened to him. And I keep saying this, it is the worst nightmare that a parent could ever go through. Are, are, and not to throw police under the bus, anything, but is, have they, I mean, they just, they're at the end, there's nothing more they're doing or. Well, we just, we actually just, got through meeting with the detective that's been assigned to the case. And we spent an hour and a half with him prior to this. And he he's doing the best he can with what he's been given, which is absolutely nothing um, until something comes forward. Um, we can't send him out and do search warrants or ping phones or do anything like that unless we have a credible uh, witness, someone that's going to come out and say, I saw this. You can't say my friend told me they saw this because that won't hold up. And unfortunately, where we live in our society right now, all of the laws tend to go towards the criminals. Um, I mean, I don't like to say that really, but that's kind of how I feel. They protect everyone else but people that need to be protected. And so, the detectives, like I said, the detective's hands are kind of tied right now. He's got a whiteboard. He told us today that he's got – a whiteboard and he's got more magnets and more notes on his Michael Bryson case than he does on the other 20 cases he's working. So is the FBI, one of our, Mark Molina is asking, is the FBI only called in when it's a missing children or minors? I can't answer well, is, that. From, the FBI normally only gets involved when it's something that goes across state lines and, be, and becomes a federal matter. Um, it, it did happen in national forest. So I, I I don't really know what that connection would be, but in it, just in speaking with the um, with the officer originally with the detective, um, they treat this as a missing person case until they have credible evidence that a crime has been committed, and so that's that's this one is going to be in the missing person category until someone either comes forward or we get some information that they it would leads us to to believe that there was a crime committed. So. I'm going to bring this up because I can. Um, do, does this show on the part of, let's, we won't say anyone in particular, but there really is because Michael was probably high and it was a party and there were drugs and that kind of thing. Don't you think there's a real prejudice against that? That already people kind of, there's this, this like, well, you know, and what we forget is that Michael was trying to get past this stuff, but this is a battle people have in our culture today. This is like, um, do you, are you experienced? I, I don't want to say a prejudice, but there's almost like a writing off of it because of that. And that's, and that's absolutely. absolutely. I agree. Um, that's, I mean, and that's why from the very get go, I, I came out and said, you know, I know Michael and I know Michael's life, and I know where he was going, and I know Michael is not a saint, but you know what? 
if you look at the Let's Find Michael Bryson page and you look at some of the comments that people are making about Michael, some of the memories they have about Michael, the pictures they have with Michael, this is a young man. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, numbers is not a big thing for me, but there's over 15,000 people on the Let's Find Michael Bryson page. That should say something. Well, and, I have, I have, I have, um, 429, which means you can probably triple that to show an average number of people. Um, and, and what I guess what does that, Tina, for you and, and um, Parrish, does that kind of, um, God, it gives me hope in humanity. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There's some assholes out who are there who know what happened. And, and, and I hope that they get their ass found. Um, but in, but the, the greater population, I mean, after COVID and all the things going on and the fires, you know, in Michael's own way, he's causing us to see our humanity again. Um, which I think is kind of from talking to you guys and reading the comments. That's what he always said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any hotlines that people are asking? The, um, the family has put my number out several times um, for people to call me. And I've, I've had, I've, I've spent hours on the phone talk, talking with people with tips, but once again, have, have yet to find one with any credible, um, you know, evidence to show where where we should go with the whole thing. You know, who we should talk to, where we should look. It's just, it's 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 the most frustrating thing I've ever been involved with. And somebody and knows. knows. You got to believe it. You got to believe that somebody knows, just because of the circumstances. So, for Tina and Parrish, like, do you do you? I would think that you would. You, if you could at least know what happened to him, then you don't imagine because you have to, I would think you just have to sit and come up like in the middle of the night when you wake up, the scenarios roll through your head, don't they? Well, uh, first of all, you, you got to fall asleep. Um, Tina will joke around and tell you that that's not a problem for me, but um, <laughs> falling asleep is the hardest part because of those things that go through your head. And then, um, the, the amount of sleep you get because of the thoughts that are going through your head. And um, Tina said it today um, while we were having lunch. She's like, you know, as much as I hate to say this, I hope Michael overdosed because I know he just went to sleep. Um, but then you get woken up with Michael walked down the road and met somebody who doesn't really care about people. And now he's dismembered and, buried somewhere. Um, Michael overdosed, people panicked, and they got rid of his body. Is um, that what you yeah. said? From the beginning, that's kind of what you told me that you kind of think happened, huh? There's, there's so many scenarios that go through your mind. You just, you don't know. I mean, that's the whole thing. You just don't know. And that's the hardest part, you know, and you, you try and comfort each other and you try and comfort, you know, your own self with with ideas and and it's it's tough i mean there's just there's no other way to put it it's tough and one of the hardest things that um we are finding right now is it's okay to, to go out and have a good time and be happy but honestly i feel guilty i feel guilty that i'm happy and i feel guilty that i'm not out searching for my son and right now with the um, forest being closed I can't, and it drives me crazy. So Donovan, what did you say to the people that were at that party? What would you say? I mean, you're brave enough to come forward, and you know, I I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, um, I would have to say that if there is any information that hasn't been put forth that would contribute into finding Michael, now is a better time than any sooner than later. Really like closure is what everybody is looking for. And the only way to do that is to have answers through information. So I just urge anyone that knows anything to speak out. 
Do you, so Tina, um, like, you know, a week after this was going on, I'm sure the worst thought was that Michael was dead. Now what's the worst thought? That we will never find his body and give him closure that he deserves. And that you deserve. And we deserve. Yeah. Because how do and you... I I want to feel that peace. I want to be able to feel peace. Um, but if you don't know what happened, it's really hard to find that peace. So how can the community help you now? What can people do? Keep Michael's uh, face and name and situation on topic. Um, eventually, someone's going to walk by somebody and they're going to hear them talking and they're going to say, oh, I know what happened to that. I know what happened there. And they'll have enough um, strength to stand up and, and say what they know. Um, we're, we're not going to let this story die. Um, Michael has, um, he's got an army behind him right now. And when mom and dad get tired, we've got over 15,000 people plus that's picking us up and pushing us forward. Um, that's what's given us the strength to go. So just keeping his name out there, keeping his story out there, um, eventually someone is either going to slip or they're going to get arrested. And I've got a plea bill, no deal for you. I don't know. Um, but that's that's what we're hoping for. Do you, um, so, like when you're sitting, because you know, I, I want people to also know what they don't probably. I mean, your friends do, but what the general public doesn't know is that you guys, um, you're you're where you're you have great heartache. Your spirits. I mean, you guys are you're you're kind of funny people. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys, they, we call up and we have a really good time chatting because I think, and I, I wonder, was Michael like that? What do you miss the most about him not being around? Was he like you guys kind of crazy, corny? Yes. Yeah, I could attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> Always had a smile on his face yep. every time I saw him. That video that was produced that you guys put on my page, I had so many people come on and say, oh, my God, I'm just crying. It was so sweet. It was like, what if you, Tina, what have you learned about a mom's love, especially for a boy? Not that it's not that you don't love your daughter just as much, but there's something when a mom and a son, my wife to say, I got two boys and they love me. But there is something with mom. It's like I'm like, you know. You know what I mean? There's just some connection that a mom has where, what is that? It's a strong connection and it's hard to explain. Um, Michael and I have always been so close and we don't even have to talk. We can look at each other and we get each other. We, I miss everything about him. I bet. I miss his smile. I miss his laugh. His laugh. He would call me up every day just to say, "Hey, Mama, how are you?" You know. Yeah. I just I miss everything about him. Paris, you said one of the things in this um, when we because we've I don't know how many times you had, we've done this, but a number of times, and one of the times on here. Um, um, you said something, Courtney, I already went there. Somebody says, don't go there, Rick. The bond is unimaginable. <laughs> but it, it may be unimaginable, but it needs to be said because that's an important part of the whole thing. But Paris, yeah. you said something that you knew. Michael has struggled with drugs for so many years and tried his hardest to get off of them. And I, I have lots of friends who are in that same place. And it's just not, if you've never been there, no, do not judge because it's not an easy thing. And you had said, I hope he found peace. And yeah. I think that's the most profound thing that someone can love their kid so much that you think, you know what? I need to know what happened to you, but I, I hope you found your peace. Um, that I don't, I think that's, 
uh, I think that's how God loves us. Is just He wants us to find who we are, and maybe exactly. exactly, you know. And that's and that was, I mean, that was Michael in a nutshell. I mean, like like these guys said. I mean, he was he would joke and he'd laugh and he was always poking fun at people. I mean, we just saw a comment um, the other day on on. Uh, on the Facebook page, you know, they, they, they were on the porch talking and Michael had them laugh until five in the morning. And they were like, you know, oh, my God, it's five in the morning. You know, we got to go to bed, you know. And But the whole time it was just he was just poking fun at people. And that's just I mean, we all do. I mean, that's just part of our family makeup, you know, and and. Uh, <laughs> he took it to a whole new level. He really did. He made people feel love no matter who you were um and i uh i made a comment on his page a couple of days ago and about um the leper and i tell you what that was michael he wasn't afraid he didn't care who you were he didn't care where you were he got right down on your level and he loved you he made you feel loved and the world needs more michaels yeah. Well, I have a feeling that he didn't fall far, far from the tree with the two of you. Um, Cause I think you're the same way. You're amazing people. You really are. And I don't know if you see that because I know you're in a lot of pain, but in this time when things are so tragic for so many people, there's a light that shines in you. Um, and we all feel it and there's something about pain and love that go together that you're just, it, it's, you know, I, I'm not a, there's no reason for anything. I don't believe any of that stuff. Horrible things happen. Horrible things happen. But the way you two have handled yourself and the way you have just fought for him and kept this story alive and, go, and then not don't cease to do anything. You're inspiring, I think, the rest of our community to understand that we are still alive. There is still hope. There is still love. Um, people matter. And um, I don't know. I'm so grateful for not the situation. I don't want anybody to take it like that. That's just that's shit. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm just grateful for the way you two have handled it and allowed us to be a part of this whole thing. Somebody on here saying, Rick, does the family and followers have a form of protest in the streets of Eugene Springfield to get the local media to cover the story? What's the deal? Um, Love you, Cindy. <laughs> Love you, Cindy. Cindy, I think um, I probably don't even need to answer that. But, you know, when a story, when the heart gets warmest, the story goes coldest. And that's when you see what people are really and institutions are made of. And um, you're just seeing um, what that is made of. And I think we as a community can do this on our own. Um, we keep the message out there. We keep doing this. Um, yeah, sure, it would be nice to have others covering the story. But um, we got probably more people on here right now than they're going to all have on their 5 o'clock edition of the news. <laughs> and, I, and I can say that because I was there. Um, there are so many comments on there. Uh, that you guys just have to go read this and you guys. So um, why don't you give us just like a last, what, what, what you want. If anybody can speak, it's kind of, you know, um, whatever you want to get out there. I want you to be able to do that. As far as an investigator and my information is out there, you can stay anonymous. Just give me some direction. Just give me any direction that's legitimate and I will follow it like a, Dog on a bone. Yeah, I think uh, just something to th think about with the Facebook page uh, that has been up for Michael, the Let's Find Michael Bryson page. Um, you know, there's there was like 40 plus people at that party, and there's now 15,000, I think, on that page. So. There's a lot of hearsay, there's a lot of input, but with, focus yeah, keep the focus where it needs to be. And instead of 
antagonizing or having a poor dialogue about this in some aspects, we really need to just bring it back to the fact that we're trying to find Michael and we need to do that as a community. And honestly, a house divided cannot stand. So we need to come together to help bring him home. And I, I, I kind of want to reiterate that because, um, I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of things that have been said and felt, and I, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you, I have put so many things on my phone and so many things on that computer, and before I hit the return button or the send button, it's like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that, and I erase it, then I do it again, then I erase it, and it's, it's tough. It is tough to be gracious. It is tough to be understanding and loving to some people that are downright despicable and mean-spirited. Um, we've had some really nasty things that have been said on that page that we have not caught in time, and they were on the page for a while. And you know, no fault to ours or the ad admins because we can only do so much. And and it just breaks my heart that people can be that mean. I guess what I'm trying to say. And and um, I, I this kid here beside us, um, you know, when everyone else left he was there and he caught a lot of flack from some of his so-called friends for being there. And it was, and I told him about day seven, I said, you know, Donovan, a, a line has been drawn in the sand now because you're here and you're helping us. And, you know, the other thing that I told him was those people that are on the other side of that line, those aren't your friends. And, and I, I was hoping and praying the whole time during this thing that he would see how real family and real friends act towards each other through our example and Michael's, I'm going to say, his real friends, his core friends, the ones that came out and spent, you know, a week looking for Michael, not just a day or two here and a day or two there. Um, and, and Donovan's got a lot of flack from it, you know, and, and I, I just want him to know and you guys to know that, that Tina and I appreciate everything that he has been standing for. Well, it's been tough. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been tough. I see my, I see my kid here, you know, and, and uh, I don't want this kid to go down the same road, you know. Um, he's, he's doing good. He's doing better. You know, and I appreciate that. And I'm hoping that that's part of Michael's legacy is getting another young man to head down the, the right path for him. Are you and, talking? Uh, about, are you talking about Donovan? Yes, I am. Um, you know, and and not and not just Donovan, but I mean, Michael. We kind of joked about this the other day, and and I was talking with a friend of ours, and I I told him I said, you know, Michael has brought more people to their knees praying for not just our family, but for him and their community and just their own life. And I said, he's brought more people to their knees than any local pastors have in a year. This, this little kid, you know, and I tell you what, the army's growing and he is, he has sparked a fire in people that if that's his legacy, I am so proud of my son. Tina. But one, one last thing. First of all, I, I just want to thank everybody that has followed the page and given us support and who have picked us up when we felt like we couldn't go on anymore. Um, thank you, Mark, for everything that you've done. Thank you, Donovan, for being here. Um, thank you, Rick, for doing the show. If anybody knows anything, please call. Anything that seems like, you know, I did hear, I, I did hear an altercation. Uh, and I and I believe it was that night. I believe it was that weekend. Those may be things that we 
it, it may help us to find our son. So anything that is little could be, huge. could be huge. So just keep that in mind and keep praying for us. Um, keep praying that we find Michael and that we give Michael the closure that we need. So you are very welcome. Uh, do this. It's our, this is what we do as a community, right? And yep. I'm going to throw Bucks out there again. We Bucks Sanitary Service. Thank you, Scott and Lisa, because you do care about people, and this is something we need to care about. I feel like I don't want to leave until. Hey, Donovan, dude, you, you're a very brave young man. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's and just to do. Well, I hope I hope you do better with what's going on, whatever it is in your life. Okay. Don't let that hold you back. Um, what you just did here today should show you what you're really made of. I mean, you got balls, dude. You know, <laughs> I mean, you do. You, and don't you forget that look at when it came down to sticking up for your friend, you stood up and you did this. You can, do, not even you could do anything you need to do. I have total faith in you. And he's got an army behind him. Right. I'm glad you can't. It's nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm, I'm honored. People that struggle, those are my kind of people because we all do. And you and I, <laughs> I graduated from high school with a 1.67 grade point average because I, I focused on I, I, I focused on socialization and partying and drugs, and I minored in education. Um, we all can get past that stuff. And I'm so honored. It's, it's fun that Michael, uh, you know, it'd be great if he could ever see what he did, but maybe that's at another time at another place. Tina and um, you guys are awesome. And we are, there's a ton of people on here for you. Even somebody from Hawaii. <laughs> You're global. You guys are global. Mark, thank you for doing what you do. And um, we're going to keep the story alive. Um, and for sure, we're always going to keep my memory alive. That can't go away. That won't happen. All right. So I'm going to give them a little more guilt trip and you guys just can sit back and I'm going to take you off the screen. Okay. All right. Thank All you, right. Rick. Thank you very much, guys. All right. That's what it is. So we have a job to do as a community. So we have a family who needs help. We have a lot of people that are suffering right now. Here's somebody that we know the situation. Somebody out there knows what happened and you need to come forward and not be an ass. And if somebody out there knows and you know that, they're, that what they did to, to Michael and what happened to him and you know it, you are just as guilty. So come clean and, and stand up and for maybe the first time in your life, be real. I mean, come on. This family is suffering. They're, they need to know where their kid is. They need to know what happened. If you screwed up and you did something wrong, okay, you pay the consequence. But you've got to tell these people what happened to their kid. It's not fair. Put yourself in their place. It's not fair. You need to stand up and take charge of your own life for a change because this is not acceptable behavior. All right. I'll get off my soapbox for five minutes. Uh, Scott and Lisa Weld, thank you so much, Buck Sanitary Service, for sponsoring the show today. Um, I am so happy to live in a community like this. Now, let's go figure out what the hell happened, okay? It's up to us because the buck truly does stop right here, right now.